Hi, I'm Gary Bouton, and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month, I'm going to show you how to take a selfie. I'm kidding. This month is part one of two TV tutorials you're going to see this month on photo composition. You're going to take one, perhaps two pictures. I'm going to show you some filters that integrate the pictures, make them look better. You're going to wind up with a professional result that's beyond compare. We're not going to do any photo retouching. We're not going to use those weird third-party filters that make everyone look like Shayla Buff. We're just going to do photo composition. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to load it in Zara. The first photo composition you're going to adjust is to make a background color compatible with the foreground figure. We have a model here who's wearing a uh, dusty pink outfit and the set designer who had three brain cells thought that green would be a good color to match. We disagree. So you choose the photo tool and there's a new tool here in version 10 called the select colors to enhance. When you click and hold on it you've got a tolerance and a fade control. But first let me show you how it's done. What you do is you click on the area that you want to enhance and you'll get a small red circle with handles that you can make larger to cover larger areas because after all hue also has a saturation and brightness to make up the entire color and these green bricks have as you can see several different tones so we're going to try to cover them all by making them larger, moving them around, and so on. Once this is done, once you think you've got all the uh, green uh, in the picture marked, what I want you to do now is to play around with the tolerance a little bit. I think we can, uh, we can increase that and then uh, lower the fade uh, just about there so that now that we have the selected colors, we click the set photo hue controls and what you have here is the hue the predominant color that we're changing and uh, as you can see it's no longer green it's very close to the uh, to the other tiles the uh, saturation control uh, determines how much of that hue is in the picture and this is me just goofing around to show you how dramatically you can change this I think somewhere between red and yellow is going to be a good color to complement the gal's dress. And as you can see, the colors match much better. It makes a much more complimentary, beautiful photo. What we're going to try next is we're going to uh, imitate depth of field. What you're going to need is a uh, couple of subjects and a uh, tripod for your camera. But depth of field is a very interesting effect that you can add and have con total control over when you uh, take multiple photographs of a foreground and background subject. As you can see here, the pawn is perfectly focused and the rest of the chess pieces are blurred. Now, this was not one photograph. This is actually uh, three pieces that were put together like this. First of all, with your camera locked down on a tripod, take a picture of the background elements. Then you move on to taking all the pieces off the page and only do the background. Third of all, the foreground image you can do anywhere and um, you're actually going to want to uh, cut out the, uh, the pawn to put in the foreground so we have complete control over it. So, now that you've seen the three pictures, the first thing that you want to do when you take this picture or you do this tutorial is you want to select the pawn out of its background picture so it's standalone. So you can use the shape tool or any tool you like to uh, basically draw a very tight selection around the pawn. And uh, what you're going to do, let me uh, show you this a little better because the uh, default width and color aren't the swiftest. And you can zoom it out as much as you like. Now, uh, I am not going to bore you uh, showing you how to draw a selection around a pawn. I'm just going to bore you a little bit. Uh, I'm showing you how this is done. And actually, I have the uh, finished version done underneath the uh, pawn drawing here. Surprise. Well, I thought it was under there. Hang on. And there we go. That's what it looks like traced. What I want you to do now 
is to uh, take that pawn and move it over to the uh, picture that has no chess pieces on it. Put it in the foreground, maybe make it a little bit larger to add some drama. And then what I want you to do is to take uh, the chess background piece. And what I've done is I've uh, right click created a copy. Put the pawn in front and then take, uh, let me move this around a little bit more. What I want you now to do is to uh, take the transparency tool. And what you're going to do with that background picture selected is you're going to drag a linear gradient so that uh, the two pictures look as though they blend through and take your time to finding the starting and ending point. And what this is doing is this is blending the uh, blank background. I've moved it here to show you that with uh, the layer on top with all the back chest pieces. Now if you click the photo of the back chest pieces, choose the photo tool, you have a sharpened blur setting on the uh, info bar. And uh, if I move in just a little bit, I'm going to take the photo tool and we have a sharpened blur setting on the info bar. And now that uh, the background has been blurred, I want you to select all three items, press Q, and that makes it a tidy little rectangular composition now that it's clipped. Let's reverse this. Let's press Alt Q with the composition selected to unclip it. Select the background that's blurry. Take the photo tool and return that to uh, sharpness with a zero setting. Now, as you can see, that's perfectly sharp. What I want you to do is to select the foreground. And this is going to be a little bit tough because you've got transparency working on, but if you uh, get it right there, as you can see, that's the foreground. And what you have is a nice floor that gradually goes from focused to unfocused. Now I want you to unfocus the uh, pawn and let's make a clip view by selecting them and pressing Q. Now here's a little trick. The pawn isn't blurred quite enough. And if you drag to minus 100, that seems to be the top limit. But if you type in minus 200, like I've done there, you've got a really nice blurry pawn. And this is a good composition. And you'll see even more later this month on 